Hello and welcome to the course. My name is Jenny Heyman and I have the privilege of being your instructor and facilitator and partnering with you for the next nine weeks as you focus on designing digital learning resources. I just want to tell you a little bit about me. I am living in Sudbury, Ontario, so being an online instructor at a true distance. I'm an associate faculty member at Royal Roads University for purposes of this course and this is the first time I'm teaching the course and I'm very excited about it. I am also the Chair of Teaching and Learning at Cambrian College here in Sudbury and have been in that job for about a year and a half after finishing my doctoral degree at Arizona State University. And I've worked in lots of universities and, uh, and corporations here in Ontario as an instructional designer. So I have lots of experience that I hope I can share with you and I look forward to learning more about your experiences. I'm gonna use a Padlet as a means of sharing some ideas and walking you through the overview of the course. So I'll switch over to that. And again, it's really nice to meet you and I look forward to working with you. So I live and work in the territory covered by the Robertson-Huron Treaty of 1850. The land here is the traditional territory of the Atikamikshang and Anishinaabek people. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to live and work among them. I acknowledge the historic and current violations of this treaty according to indigenous peoples in the region and act as an ally whenever appropriate and according to their needs and requests. And I like to research and find out more about the land and I'm in a continuous learning process as many of you are about the lands on which you live and work. So with respect to the course outline, you can read the full details of the course outline on the Moodle shelf for the course, uh, including all the policies and program information about the Mallet program, which I'm sure you're fairly familiar with uh, this series being a little bit long into your program, which is really exciting. Um, in terms of this course, I just want to give you a quick summary. So there are three units in the course, uh, all of which are focusing on the creation of a well-designed digital learning resource that begins to solve something I call a problem of practice in your context. And I learned about a problem of practice as part of action research, as part of my doctoral studies. And I think it's a really nice way to focus when you're trying to design a solution. Uh, the learning outcomes for the course are pretty simple. There are some additional details that you can read in the learning outcomes statement. Uh, the first is identify a need that can be met by a digital learning resource. And again, this is talking about your problem of practice, thinking about your empathy practices and methods. Um, learning outcome B for the course is design and create a digital learning resource. That one's pretty straightforward. And outcome C is critique a digital learning resource. And so you'll be doing that in a few different ways as you go by examining learning theory, frameworks for examining educational technology, whatever you might choose to use for your resource, getting peer feedback, and feedback from your users as part of your empathy methods. So unit one comprises four activities and one assignment and all activities in the course are leading you toward the assignments um, in the units where they occur. Unit two is five activities and two assignments, one of which is a team assignment to co-create a rubric that will be used to grade the assignment three. Uh, and in unit three, there are three activities and one assignment uh, and only two weeks of the course in unit three. So it will definitely be a period of wrapping things up, summarizing and reflecting. Um, so in unit one, here are the activities, review, and your review of design thinking and design notes. And I understand that a review of design thinking may be helpful, uh, relevant to your LRNT 524 course, just making sure that you understand some of the concepts around human-centered design. Activity two is framing a problem of practice. And again, that may be a little bit new to you, um, but I think you'll find it familiar. Activity three are your empathy methods. So choosing how you will connect with potential users of your learning resource and learn from them. Activity four is uh, what I call informed ideation, pitching your design. So I'm gonna ask you in unit one to actually do a video pitch uh, for your design proposal for me and for your peers. So that does culminate in assignment one, digital learning resource design pitch with a design note. And you'll read more about that in unit one. In unit two, there are four weeks. So this is really kind of the, the meteor part of the course, the middle um, busy work. There are five activities, which first of which is theory informed learning design. Second is evaluating digital learning resources. And here is where you'll build your team rubric. 
Um, activity three is co-creation and reviewing just a little bit about the value of peer review and feedback in, as part of a design process. Activity four covers open educational resources uh, in unit two. And this is an area of, of personal passion for me. Um, my doctoral work was in the use of open educational resources in Ontario. Uh, and I have a really active and exciting global practice and with lots of global colleagues around the use of open educational resources. And then activity five in unit two is the prototype phase. And again, that's leading you to assignment three really building the prototype, a draft of your digital learning resource. In unit three, um, we're gonna cover off a couple of things, including the value of reflection. And I know you have been studying that and working on that throughout your program. Activity two is creating a learner guide or a facilitator guide for your resource. So if your resource is going to require someone to do facilitation, someone to teach it, then you want to focus on giving your facilitators some advice on how to do that well according to your understanding of your own design. Uh, or if the, the resource is meant to be used in a self-directed way, then you want to give your learners some additional guidance in how they should use it, um, what they should focus on, and so on. What I call the bridging pieces of any design. Uh, and then uh, course project completion is activity three, and that's really just finishing up, finalizing, um, pulling it all together, incorporating the feedback you've received and the things that you've learned throughout the course in each of your activities. Uh, and we will have a final collaborate session for the course where uh, I hope to introduce um, the instructor for your next course, LR LRNT 528, um, and to reflect with you and summarize with you about the course. So these nine weeks are gonna go by very quickly. Uh, I am here to be a full support for you as you work through the activities support for you as you work in your teams, and provide you with any feedback that's helpful to you as you create your digital learning resources. Again, I look forward to meeting you each personally, learning more about you, and learning more about your situations in this sort of challenging time around COVID-19 uh, and the way we've been in Canada for the past couple of months. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon.